happened when I, one of the uh, first years that I was working the road, I think like within my first two or three years of being on the road, um, I was working a club in Lansing, Michigan. It was, uh, I want to say the second or third club that I had uh, been booked to host. And I was very excited because I was opening for a comic by the name of Dave Landau that weekend. And uh, Dave was a uh, very, super, by the way, super fucking funny comedian. Uh, he just did my podcast uh, a couple, maybe a week or two ago was the episode that got released. Oh, wait, this is not the best road to be on for this. Stuff. I'm sorry if there's a lot of disturbance. Uh, in the audio, but I was working, uh, I was working this club in Lansing, and, uh, you know, after the, uh, Dave, Dave Landau was not going to be, uh, there the first night, so, this was, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and, uh, you know, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, uh, one show Thursday, so the Thursday night show, they had a different headliner come in from, um, I think Detroit or something, uh, because Dave was, uh, doing a, uh, a television show at the time. I think it might have been Last Comic Standing. I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember that detail. But, um, we had a different, uh, headliner. And, uh, there was a tradition, you know, it was the first time that I had ever been at that club. And it was the first time the feature had ever been at that club. So the, the club's tradition was uh, to uh, have a shot for everybody before the show. So we did a shot, right? And it was like, all right. Uh, some of you might remember, not a fan of shots. <laughs> An old man, just like to sip a gin. Uh, but, uh, you know, we did the shot. It's fine. Did the show. The show goes... Uh, as as uh, uh, pretty decent, uh, you know, uh, nobody hated me. That's pretty decent in my book. Show ends, people hang out, you know. Um, I get a beer, uh, and this is a big Lansing beer, so it was like a tall, like a tall beer, and I'm drinking that. Uh, and uh, you know, everybody's kind of hanging out after the show. So the show ends around. 10 ish, 10, 10, between 10 and 10 30. Uh, people bullshit with the headliner, bullshit with the feature, and myself. Uh, so all the audience leaves around, um, I don't know, 11, 11 15 maybe. From that point on, uh, the rest of the staff are hanging out in the office. It's kind of bullshitting. You know, having a having some extra drinks and stuff. So, then to celebrate the success of the first show of the weekend, another rounds of shots comes around. So now we're at two shots, one giant beer, and then a second giant beer for me. So it's like, all right, once I finish this beer, I'll kind of drink some water, uh, cool off, and then we'll we'll head back to uh, you know where I'm crashing. And uh, in the midst of this second beer, the feature goes, I have some you know, marijuana in the car. I can go grab it if everybody would like to partake in some. And we're like, yeah, sure. So we did. So that happened. So now I'm a little drunk and I got a little high. Not a good combination. <laughs> Not a good combination, you guys. Uh, this, this is like six or seven years ago that this happened. And I got to that point of high where I'm having an intern, like I'm responding to things, but I've come to that point where I'm very unsure whether I'm responding to things out loud or not. I have no idea. I have no idea whether I'm responding to things out loud. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not, right? And the feature who I'm sitting right next to uh, he, he, you know, says something or, or tells a short story about something. And it, and I, I had a retort to it, uh, 
a retort that I thought was uh, rather funny. And I was waiting for him to, to react to the funniness of my retort to what he said. So I just kind of stared at him for a minute. You know, just waiting for that validation. And I got to the point where I was like, I don't know if I actually said that out loud. And now I'm just kind of staring at this person I just met. And then he turns to me and goes, hey, you all right? And I panicked. Um, Because now it's like, well, I don't know how long I've been staring at this dude. I don't know if everybody else saw me just randomly stare at this dude. It's starting to become very evident that I might have not said the thing that I thought I said out loud. So I'm just arbitrarily staring at this guy, waiting for a reaction that isn't going to come from a statement that has been verbalized. And I just kind of panicked and I stood up and I said, I have to go home now. And everybody's like, okay, yeah, I think we're... I think we're all going to try to go home because it's like almost three o'clock in the morning. Uh, And I was like, okay, but I have to go home now. And they're like, okay. And I just fucking bounced out of the the office and I don't go to my car. I, uh, I go to the bathroom. Uh, I, you know, and then I like splash water on my face. I'm trying to like get my shit together. And I walk out, and uh, and everybody's just like, hey, man, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, 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 everything's fine. Everything's fine. They're like, okay. So we step outside, and I'm holding on to the railings, um, you know, because there was a little walkway to get into the club, and I'm holding on to the, to the railing on the walkway. And... Uh, I'm, I'm bullshitting with with the last two members of the staff that were that were locking up and going to be on their way. They park right in front of the little railing. I parked a little way down. I could see my car. My car was approximately ten feet away from where I was standing, probably. Right at this point, who knows? Uh, it could have been a little bit less, a little bit more. I don't really know. But I'm kind of talking to to wake myself up a bit. And they go, all right, get home safe and hand me a bottle of water. So I go, will do. I drink a bunch of the water. I go, thank you. They get in their car and they leave. And I start, I I decide that I'm going to walk towards my car. And I take maybe, maybe two steps before I lose all balance and my legs, it's just like my legs decided not to be legs anymore. And I was, and I felt myself like falling face forward. So I had to like brace myself and I used my upper body to shove myself against the wall, smack my head against the wall. And then I, I like rolled on the wall and I slid down the wall. And now I'm just sitting outside this club. Uh, and I'm staring out into the street and I had a decision to make and I was like you know I could just stay here on the street and uh, and not worry about anything it's not that not that bad out it's pretty cool springtime it's about 68 degrees I could just stay here then I thought I feel like the club wouldn't particularly appreciate me kind of just sleeping outside of the club And I don't think they need the press of homeless man found outside club uh, or homeless comedian found outside of comedy club. 
uh, you know, the sad truth of entertainment in America or some whatever byline they want to throw there, right? So I think I ended up sitting there contemplating my decision for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And I was like, okay, my car's not that far away. I can make it. If I stand up and I push off the wall, I can make it to my car. Uh, So I stood up and I pushed off the wall and I bolted to the car and I made it. My legs were fine at this point, by the way, right? Like, it wasn't like uh, I'd lost the use of my legs or anything. (laughs) I think I just, like, I think I just had, like, a stagger moment. uh, And I lost all balance. And I thought my legs weren't working anymore. Um, Then I sat in my car, probably for, like, another 20, 25 minutes, uh, drinking this water. And, you know, where I was staying wasn't that far away. I was maybe maybe eight, ten minutes away. I felt a little bit better. And uh, and I pulled out, and I drove back to the place. Made it back safe. Everything was fine. And I, you know, was crashing on, on someone's couch. Uh, got to the couch, and then I woke up next the next morning, and I was like, ow, my head hurts. Like, right here, my head hurts. And uh, and I was like, why does it hurt? And then I remembered, oh, when I was falling, in order to prevent myself from falling face forward, um, I shoved my whole upper body towards the wall to brace myself. And I smacked my head into the wall and scraped it. So I had this like this this scrape under like just just a little under my hairline so you couldn't really tell that I scraped my head uh and I was just like oh no so I show up to the club the the that day I and I'd like it to shower and I felt where it was and you know everything was fine uh And I went back to the club. And at the end of the night, you know, so the club manager comes up to me and she's like, do you want to start with shots? And I was like, please don't. Please don't do that to me. She's like, what? And I was like, listen, last night was not great. And she was like, yeah, you were a little, you were a little goofed, a little goofy last night. And I was like, I know. Uh, I don't, I don't want to do that again. I'm going to have one of those tall beers and that's it. And that's the whole, like, I'm going to drink that the whole night. And she's like, all right, suit yourself. Uh, <laughs> she was like, do you need me to come pick you up tomorrow so you can have a, a fun night out? And I was like, no, I don't. I don't ever need to have fun night outs ever again. I'm never having fun. <laughs> ever in the history of fun. <laughs> You know, the rest of the weekend was fine. Uh, there was one show that I remember just fucking bombing my ass off, uh, telling this story uh, called uh, that that uh, called the letter, which is available on the band camps, uh, and it's just it's a, a story of one of the stupidest fucking things I did in high school. Uh, but it's like eight or nine minutes, and once you start. It's like there's no exit point to that story. <laughs> uh, so I so I just like I don't know, just I I, I kept doing it. I bombed my ass off. Uh, and this is one of those things I remember. Um, the owner of the club came up to me, and she said, "That's a good story. You took a big risk, uh, and you stuck with it. And I think uh, uh, you know that's a good call because I think the audience still respects you a little bit." That, that you you delivered the story the way you delivered it. And Dave came up and talked to me a little bit. And he was like, that was pretty risky. It, you know, um, I, I don't think I would have done something like that. But, uh, you know, it's a good story. There, I would polish it up and I would look for a way out of it if it's not going well. Um, and he was like, there might not be an exit strategy, but, you know, you might want to figure out what, what some alternative directions are 
um, where you can still tell the story and make sure that you know you don't bomb. Uh, but he was like, you know, good to t- good on you to take the take the risk and stuff. So that was really cool. I felt like that was really cool. It was really nice of him to say. He did not have to say something like that to me. Um, so you know, just not another lesson I learned. Can't drink and smoke at the same time. It will uh, uh, ruin my life or potentially get close to ruining my life. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you are new to this channel, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notifications when uh, I put up new videos. I'm going to be putting up videos every single day, so there's going to be a ton of content coming out on this channel. Uh, There's going to be storytelling, uh, commentary about the media, uh, historical commentary, philosophical commentary, all surrounding uh, stand-up comedy. If you you like comedic commentary about these topics, then this is the channel for you. Uh, And if you uh, come to the channel often and you haven't subscribed, what what, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Get get subscribed to this. Come come hang out with us. But uh, for more information about me, you can go to my website, uh, ramannoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, while you're there, you can check out all of my past stand-up comedy albums, which if you snag them from Bandcamp, are available as Pay What You Want, which means that they're uh, available for free. Uh, you can check out past videos. You can check out past podcasts. And uh, you can donate if you have the ability to make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. You can donate directly on my website and become a sustaining member directly on my website. And or you can see how, you know, the various different ways that you can make a donation. And you can also find out about live stand-up comedy events. Well, live-ish stand-up comedy events. I'm going to be doing uh, a test show on Zoom. Uh, Tickets are available for that right now. They are free, and there's only 10 spots available. This is going to be a test show to find out, you know, what format's going to work, if there are technical difficulties that I need to figure out, and then figuring out uh, what consistent day to try to do um, these Zoom shows. I'll probably do a couple of them uh, while we are uh, currently in the quarantine situation. So... That is available. Uh, The tickets for that are available right now. There's only 10 spots available. uh, So make sure that you grab them um, before they're all gone. And then once we decide the date for the first official live-ish (laughs) stand-up comedy Zoom show, the virtual stand-up comedy show, uh, there will be um, about 15 tickets available for the first one. Uh, And then we'll we'll go from there and we'll see, see what happens from there. Uh, So grab those tickets and come hang out with us uh, on the Zoom. Uh, Like I said, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you hit that like. Make sure that you share this out. Get the word out about these videos. And uh, and you can go to my website to find out more stuff. Uh, Till the next video. Take it easy.